Woo! Great morning. Fired up. Man, it's Monday. I'm fresh off a Jay-Z concert. I almost went into that career path, so we were kind of like chopping it up. Him from the stage, I was listening. No, but it was awesome, you guys. One thing he shared at the concert last night that I want to share with you guys, in the middle of his song, he stopped and he said, you guys, it's all about intention. I intended this right now before I was even here. He said on his first album, he said, who's the best rapper alive, Pac, uh, Biggie, Jay-Z, or Nas? He's like, this was before the album was even out. This was over 20 years ago. And he's like, I'm standing here now because of these intentions that I put forward. And for me, coming from Los Angeles, having a kid of – I had a dream when I was a kid to live in Miami with a black car and blue lights, like the blue halogen lights. I always had that dream since high school. I thought it was going to be college, going to University of Miami, and ended up being Miami now, engaged, black BMW blue lights. Same vision. It just looked a little different with the car type and the timing. So what are you intending for your life? Man, I got that at a Jay-Z concert. You never know what you're going to get personal and life development. So... I'm fired up, you guys. Today, we're going to be listening to a lady that's really been giving me a lot of nuggets. I just finished her audio book, uh, The Five Second Rule. If you haven't got a chance to listen or read it, you've got to check it out. Her name is Mel Robbins. And what it's going to teach you is a lot of us have goals and dreams and things we want to accomplish, but why don't we? And it's because it's, not, it's one thing to have goals and dreams, but it's another thing to act on them. So the five second rule that she always talks about is like, The tool, like if you want to get results, the tool is the gym and your nutrition and the Herbalife product. Those are tools. They help you do it, make it become true. The five-second rule is another tool. She's not going to just be talking about that, but she's going to be giving you the pep talk that you really need to kick it in gear. Her name is Mel Robbins. Remember, take lots of notes. We're going to get some live shares at the end. If you guys can throw in the chat bar right now, light it up. What's your name? Where you're from? You know, what are you excited about for the end of the year? And then Throw in your takeaways if you're live at work or you can't talk live, we'll read a few of your takeaways. So text your friends, text your clients, text your teammates if you're in Herbalife. Put in your client thread and your team thread. Triple M is live. you got to hop on. Monday's in full effect. So without further ado, let's get to Mel Robbins dropping nuggets on us. Let's go. Triple M. There are so many people in the world and, 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 you know, you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Motivation's garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy. We all have a habit of hesitating. We have an idea, you're sitting in a meeting, you have this incredible idea, and instead of just, you know, saying it, you stop and you hesitate. You can truly trace every single problem or complaint in your life to silence and hesitation. Those are decisions. And what I do and what's changed my life is waking up and realizing that motivation's garbage. I'm never gonna feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new. So I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. And number two, I am one decision away from a totally different marriage, a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income, a totally different relationship with my kids. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything. I'm the kind of person that believes you should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math. You can use your brain to look at the uh, fine print in a contract. But when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. How do you do that? Here's the simple test. 
does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. If you conversely look at the choice that you have to make, and the decision will shrink you, will silence you, will inhibit you in some way, then the answer is no. No matter how easy the decision is, no matter how safe the decision is, the answer is no. Now, one of the things I want to point out that when you start to use this, does it expand or does it shrink me? Does it open possibilities or does it keep things closed? Does it raise my voice or does it silence me, right? Is that there's always a short-term and a long-term impact to the decision. The short-term impact to making an expansive decision, a decision that's based in your heart and your soul, sometimes it's terrifying because sometimes it means moving or it means changing a job or changing a relationship or having a difficult conversation or starting something new. And those sorts of things are always uncomfortable. So brace for impact, put the force fields up, but make the decision anyway. Because the long-term impact of making a decision from your heart and soul, that is where the best life comes from. Because you're living for what's true for you, not what's safe in the moment. I keep talking about how you can change your life in five seconds, and that's because in five seconds flat, worry can hijack your mind. Fear can take over, and the smallest moves that you really want to make can seem terrifying. The opposite is also true. In five seconds flat, you can take control back. Do you know how often you hesitate and stop yourself? All day long. There's actually a neurological reason why change is so hard. Your brain is designed to stop you from changing. Let me explain. You see, change requires you to do things that are uncertain, scary, or new. Your brain is designed to protect you from doing things that are uncertain, scary, or new. What's your brain's favorite way to protect you? To trap you in your head by making you overthink. Now, activation energy is something that was first introduced into the field of human behavior and psychology several decades ago by a rock star professor at the University of Chicago that studied a state of flow. His name was Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and he studied, was one of the first, really, to study human behavior, human performance, and he coined this term activation energy. He actually borrowed it from chemistry, and it's a term that describes this phenomenon. In order to start any kind of chemical reaction, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to create that initial spark. A lot more energy to start it than to keep it going. There's a direct correlation to you and me. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to just get started? How hard it is to get to the gym? How hard it is to get out of bed? how hard it is to put down uh, the bottle when you go to pour a second drink and you know you shouldn't. That feeling, how hard it is to get started, this is what Mihai's talking about. You need activation energy to start the chain, to start to sit down, to start to get out of bed, to start to walk out the door. That's the key to creating any kind of change. This activation energy inside of you that causes the initial boom. And then what do we hear over time? Once you start, there's a chain reaction and that allows you to keep going. So what's this have to do with the five second rule? Freaking everything. The five second rule creates activation energy in you. The five second rule is how you activate change inside of you. It is a tool. When you start counting five, four, three, two, one, you awaken your prefrontal cortex. You begin the process of changing. You push yourself in a new direction. That first push, that's gonna be the hardest. Once you get moving, it gets so much easier. If you took money off the table, if you didn't give a shit what anybody else thought, what's the thing you want to be doing with your life? Seriously. Do you dream of being a professional photographer? Do you want to open your own restaurant? You always thought about traveling the world and entertaining kids with uh, your juggling skills. I don't know, it's your life. You get to choose what you want to do. 
Be honest with yourself. What is it that you would want to do with your life if you didn't have to pay the bills doing it? Another thing you can ask yourself, who do you find yourself sort of envious of? You know, like you look at their life and you just think, gosh, how awesome that they get to do that. Well, once you have that answer for yourself, you've gotten really honest, you've pushed the bullshit aside and you've really asked it for yourself and answered the question honestly, all you got to do is explore it. That's it. Just find one thing that you can do to enrich and expand your knowledge about it. Find one course online, Google the topic, stalk people that are pursuing this line of work. That's how you start to do it, one step at a time. So start with answering the question, what do you really want, with a massive dose of honesty. Google the topic and find one thing that you can do, just one, push yourself and start to explore. If you were to wake up and do that every single day, spend 10 minutes a day, you would be startled, astonished by what your life looks like in a matter of a year or two. And I think everybody has fear all wrong. People have so many theories about fear. They talk about, oh, well, I'm afraid of success. No, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of intimacy. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of the other thing. There's actually only two fears. Only two. And if you're in sales, which you are, or even if you're not, life is about persuading people. Life is about influencing people. And fear is the invisible force that will make you ineffective at that. It will stop you. Now, I love J.K. Rollins as an example. I mean, we all know the Harry Potter series, but what a lot of people don't know about her, she talks a lot about fear. She struggled with major depression. Do you know she was unemployed and she wrote the original idea for Harry Potter on a napkin while she was on state benefits? She was then rejected by 12 publishing houses. And this, by the way, was after she was divorced, bankrupt, and a single mom of a kid. Push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. She talks a lot about fear and about failure. Well, you know, we know the moral of the story. She just kept going. Of course she was afraid. But she had the good kind of fear, not the bad kind of fear. We live in the most amazing moment in time. So that thing that you have up here, whatever it may be, you want to use healthy eating to cure your diabetes, you want to figure out how to take care of uh, the elders and start a new hospice center, you want to move to Africa and build a school, guess what? You could walk into a bookstore right now and buy at least 10 books written by credentialed experts on how the hell you do it. You could Google it and you could probably find at least, I don't know, a thousand blogs documenting the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step transformation that somebody else is already doing? You can find anybody online and cyberstalk them. <laughs> you can just walk in their footsteps and let them, you know, just use the science of drafting. Follow what everyone else has done, because somebody else is already doing it. So why don't you have what you want? When you have all the information that you need, you have the contacts that you need, there are probably free tools online that allow you to start a business or join a group or do whatever the heck you want. It all comes down to one word. Before we go one step further, let's get one thing crystal clear. The process of buying a car sucks. Shut the front door, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the F-bomb. It's everywhere. You hear it all the time, and I, I honestly don't understand what the appeal is of the word. I mean, you don't sound smart when you say it. And it's really not expressing how you really feel. It's sort of a cheap, you know, shot to take. And of course, you know, I'm talking about the word fine. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, really? You are? Dragging around those extra 40 pounds? You're fine? Feeling like roommates with your spouse? And you're fine? You haven't had sex in four months? You're fine? Really? I don't think so. But see, here's the deal with saying that you're fine. It's actually genius. Because if you're fine, you don't have to do anything about it. But when you think about this word fine, 
it just makes me so angry. I mean, here we are at a conference about being alive, and you're going to describe the experience of being alive as fine? What a flimsy and feeble word. If you're crappy, say you're crappy. If you're amazing, say you're amazing. Tell the truth. And this not only goes for the social construct, oh, I don't want to burden you with the fact that I hate my life, or, you know, hey, I'm amazing, but that would make you feel terrible. <laughs> the bigger issue, the bigger issue with fine is that you say it to yourself. That thing that you want, I guarantee you, you've convinced yourself that you're fine not having it. That's why you're not pushing yourself. It's the areas in your life where you've given up, where you've said, oh, I'm fine. I, I, my mom's never going to change, so I just can't have that conversation. I'm fine. You know, we've got to wait until the kids graduate before we get divorced, so we'll just sleep in separate bedrooms. I'm fine. I lost my job. I can barely pay my bills, but whatever. It's hard to get a job. And, you know, one of the reasons why this word also just annoys me so much is scientists have calculated, oh yeah, I'm coming down. Scientists have calculated the odds of you being born. That's right, they've crunched the numbers. I see you up there. They have crunched the numbers on you. Yeah, no, you guys standing up, you want to sit down for this. They've crunched the numbers on you being born. And they took into account all of the wars and the natural disasters and the dinosaurs and everything else. And do you realize that the odds, the odds of you, yeah, right here, put your computer away, stand up for me, Doug. <laughs> so the odds of Doug here, turn around, say hi to everybody. The odds, oh. yeah, of Doug, Doug being born at the moment in time he was born, to the parents you were born to, with the DNA structure that you have, a hundred, or no, one and four hundred trillion. Isn't that amazing? I'm so lucky. Yes. <laughs> you're not fine, you're fantastic. You have life-changing ideas for a reason. That was amazing, I love that ending part. All right, let's get into some shares. Remember, put them in the chat thread. If you can't share live, let us know where you're from. Anna from Green Bay, what's up? Always in the chat bar, I love it. So I'm gonna give you a few that I really liked. Number one, your brain is designed to help you survive, not help you be fulfilled, be happy, or thrive. This is something crucial to understand about our like physical makeup. You gotta understand, number one, we're not our bodies. Our bodies are our vessel for this journey of the lifetime. And our mind is not who we are. It's one of our tools, just like your hands are tools, just like your voice is a tool, your mind is a tool. Remember, if you can hear it, how could it be you if you're hearing it? You know, you're hearing the thoughts. Those are your mind. You can't hear yourself if you were saying it. So you want to understand that your mind is designed to take you to a certain point. But your mind is not designed to do everything for you. What do I mean by that? Your mind and your genes, which are in your DNA and your cells, want you to survive. They want you to have offspring. So what do they want you to do? They, want, they don't ever want to jeopardize that. But surviving and having offspring is on the spectrum of being happy, fulfilled, and thriving. What does that mean? It's a part of it, but it's not all of it. So you got to realize that when your mind wants you to not be uncomfortable, not stretch, not grow, not take that risk, it's because it wants you to survive and create offspring. But you got to also realize that a part of our makeup as human beings and soul and a journey is that our happiness is found in our expansion. So if your brain and DNA wants you to just survive and produce offspring, but are not designed to take you to expansion, you're going to have to realize you're going to have to push through those sometimes to fulfill, be happy, grow, all those things by your own acts by your own will, by your own effort, because if you just stay where you were naturally going to go towards, if you never put in your own effort, it's gonna take you to part of the spectrum of who you are, your life, and your journey. So now that you understand that, you can understand why maybe when you get offered a position in your job, or if you get offered an opportunity in Herbalife, if you're building an Herbalife business, or 
you meet that person, you meet a mentor, you meet somebody at the gym and they're like, hey, I want to get healthy. Hey, I want to join the team. You can already understand why your brain would start to have these things going on about, I don't know if I could do that. Am I good enough? Can I make this happen? Because guess what? It wants you to stay right where you are. It doesn't want it you to go over here because over here there's some risk. Over here you might get hurt. Over here you might look stupid. Over here you might fail. It doesn't like those things. Why? Because they're not safe. But if you understand that that's just a part of the programming that you get to create and explore and manifest your progress, expansion, and happiness, then you know that's just a part of it. All right, when I start to do this, my brain's going to react. I'm going to start to hear some voices. I might even start to get a little sweaty and start to feel a little way. Okay, know what's coming. So now that when it comes, you can't say, well, that's the reason I shouldn't do it. No, you already knew it was part of it. It'd be like saying, well, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym and I get sweaty. And then you know what? My, my muscles start to hurt the next day. That's a part of the journey to your next level results. So if you don't want to go through that to get to here, you're never going to get to here. Understand? Push through. I love that one. Next one. Choose what you would love to do and then look around at others that are doing it. So this is really crucial. I had one of my siblings reach out to me the other day. He asked me, hey, what about your school you went to a physical therapy doctor for? I was like, hey, you thinking about the medical field? He's in 11th grade. And I was like, that's awesome. He's like, I'm thinking about plastic surgery. I said, why plastic surgery? I'm not, I'm not asking him in a way that says yes or no. I'm just saying, I want to ask him questions to get him. I want to see how he's thinking about it. He's like, well, you make a lot of money and I'm trying to get paid. And I thought I might as well go into that. And I said, okay, that's not bad. But why do you want to get paid? And he's like, well, that's what we got to do in life. And I said, you know what, what I've learned in my life, and this is just something I've learned in my journey is that if you search for the money, the money will come, but not necessarily happiness. But if you search for the happiness, the money will come as a result. Choose something that you love to do. And because you love to do it, you'll do it a lot. You'll become excellent at it. And when you're excellent at something, the money comes. He said, I never thought about it that way. He's like, there's one thing I kind of like music. I said, well, okay. He's like, I didn't know if I could make a career out of it. I was like, there's a lot of people that make money in music. You just have to love it though. And I feel like that's not really what we're taught on our life's journey. We're taught, whether explicitly or by example, we may not even know. I don't think anybody ever told me that go to school, get a job is the way to do it. I think it was just kind of shown to me because that's what people would do. And that was kind of the path that was expected. And you got to understand, if you're looking for happiness and you're looking for money, they might not always be in the same place at the same time. What does that mean? You can go get a good job and make money but not necessarily be happy right now you can go find your passion and build your passion and not necessarily make the money right now but that doesn't mean that with time the money path will create happiness or not it could or it could not but that also doesn't mean that the happiness path couldn't create money later on down the line i never thought i would go into fitness because in my head i thought personal trainers don't make any money how am i going to do this and support a family that's what i thought so i went into engineering i had an internship at chevron it sucked there's nothing wrong with Chevron. I just didn't want to be inside all day, and I definitely didn't want to be dealing with oily pipes all day. So what did I say? I said, you know what? I love health and fitness because I lost weight as a kid, and it changed my life. If I'm happy, I'll figure out the money later. I'd rather be happy and broke than balling and unhappy. That's what I told myself. And I feel like when you do that, you're going to find a way to be excellent at what you love so that when you're excellent, you'd attract the abundance. So do what you love and research others that are doing. This is why internships and volunteering and contributing are so crucial. I've seen so many people that want to go into a field, whether it be entrepreneurship, whether it be herbal life, if you're doing herbal life, whether it be medical, lawyer, whatever, and they never look at people 5, 10, and 15 years down the line in their profession. All they do is they see a, a general lifestyle that they think that profession comes with, but you're not looking at the why you want it. I'm gonna give you a little tip. If you're pursuing a career just because you think it's gonna pay your bills, I don't think you're gonna find a lot of happiness in that. Why? Because you're gonna be trying to find your happy on the nighttime and the weekends because you're gonna trade your whole day. That's not gonna be a happy life. Steve Jobs says, you wanna do what you love because working's gonna fill a major part of your life. So if you're doing a, a thing for a major part of your life that you don't like, you think you're gonna be happy? So 
start to look five, 10, and 15 years down the line. That's why for me, when I was in physical therapy and then I saw Herbalife, I started to look at people five, 10, 15 years down the line in physical therapy. And I started to look at people five, 10, and 15 years down the line in Herbalife. And they looked, acted, and were different kinds of people. And I said, which one do I want to be? And this is a crucial thing to ask yourself. If you're at a job that you don't like, but you stay there long enough, guess what? You're going to become the boss that you don't like. That boss that you don't like right now, you stay there, you're going to become them. So find something with people later down the line. That's why social media is so powerful. Go to the events, go to your like career events, whatever they are. Look at people down the road. And if you would trade places with them, continue down that path. If you wouldn't, think about a different path. And the last one. You want to have, uh, you, want to, you don't want to convince yourself that you're fine. Have you convinced yourself that you're fine without that thing that you want? I thought that was so powerful because I feel like the people that chase their dreams and don't, the people that don't have convinced themselves that they're fine without their dreams. And that's a dangerous place to get to because if you're fine without your dreams and you're going to settle for a life that isn't what you were promised when you came here, what you are possible to achieve and what you deserve. With your family. So ask yourself, have I become fine with not chasing my dreams? These are the people that I usually see that look at me weird when it's like a Monday morning and we're on a triple M. They're like, Monday morning, triple M? What is this triple M stuff? They're like, why do you have a book? They're like, why do you listen to audio book? Why are you going to a seminar? What is a seminar? I thought we were going to happy hour. These are the people that are usually going to say things like that. Why? Because they need to medicate themselves from having to think about why they haven't chased their dream. And there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe they're here to learn. Maybe they're on a vacation this lifetime and next lifetime they're gonna chase their dream. That's all right, there's no judgment, but you get to decide if you wanna be that. And I didn't wanna be that. I didn't wanna be a person that got to the end of my life, got to my 30s, my 40s, my 50s and 60s and looked back and said, I wish I had a, I wish I would have. I wish it would have been like this. I wish I would have done that. I didn't want to become that person. That was a place I didn't want to get to because I had seen some of those people and I said, I don't want that to be me. And remember, don't focus on what you don't want. So I didn't focus on it for a long time. I switched to what I do want, looking at those people down the path that I wanted to become like, started emulating. So amazing. I told y'all Mel Robbins is fire. So give me a few nuggets. Give me a thumbs up or a smile if you've got a takeaway that you want to share. I know there were a lot of nuggets today. Who's got a nugget? Give me a smile. Susie, what you got? What's up, guys? Uh, my biggest takeaway was uh, the change of decisions. I feel like, you know, she mentioned you're one decision away from a full, complete, different life, and that's so true. You know, I've, I work for a financial institution. I've been there for 10 years, and it's crazy because there's some of the people that I've came across that 10 years ago, they told me they hated their job, um, and they actually are still in the team where I started at, you know, still hating their job, um, not really changing, not much has changed with them. But I've noticed how like in, in, in that time, you know, I've moved positions about five, six times. And the thing about it is that, you know, you, you, you have that power of making that decision. And once you realize that, you know, now like that, even with us, me doing my herbal life business uh, part time, I feel like, like, there's so many things that I get to decide on a daily basis to make it a productive, to make it, to just change the, the, the course of what even our family has gone by. You know, my dad's, my parents are getting older. They're still working. They don't have a fat retirement plan. Um, and, and for me, it's like thinking about all of those things, you know, um, I know we mentioned it a lot, but I don't want to be a Walmart greeter at 70. Uh, so that's why I've, I've changed the course of what, you know, the trajectory of what my, my family's life has been um, because I want it to be different. And then just another one that I had is the just start. A lot of people feel like, you know, you have to want to do it. Like, for example, for me, a lot of people ask me, like, how do you wake up at like six in the morning and go to the gym and do this and do that? Like, how do you just want to do that? You know, like, I can't wait till I'm, I feel like that. And to the, the reality is that, you know, there is times that I don't feel like it, but like how she said, though, the numbers are one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's get up. Let's go, you know, and do this thing because I do want different. So again, it goes back to, you know, the deciding. Major nuggets. I love that. You don't have to feel like doing it to do it. And to be honest, most of the time, you're not going to feel like doing the things that are going to take you exactly where you want to go. So that was dope. Let's get one more takeaway. Give me a thumbs up or a smile if you got a takeaway. 
I'm looking around. People are absorbing the nuggets. All right, while you're thinking about it, I'm going to read one. Uh, it's a long one. Selena. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I love Mel Robbins. The five-second rule always a great way of thinking. Uh, the word fine, we lie to ourselves thinking we are fine with how things are. I had a talk with myself this weekend that I am not fine how things are in life right now. I had to be honest with myself this past Friday to push past the fears and comfort zone and start doing more. I was convinced I was fine hiding things, yet it, it ate me up inside. She said it. We hurt ourselves with the word I'm fine. That's dope. I love that. That was a great takeaway. Thumbs up, smile. One more takeaway. Who's got a nugget for us? Everybody's thinking real deep. Gloria, what you got for us? Yeah, I muted you. Give us one of your takeaways. <laughs> well, um, I think that our biggest enemy, it's always going to be ourselves. And I think when she said, just start and take it one thing at a time. Waking up, doing your, burst, your bet first thing in the morning, taking that shake or taking your tabs in the morning, going for that work at first thing in the morning, just trying to stay as positive as possible throughout your day, I think is very important. For me, I think it's, it's really, uh, personally, I think it's, it's really hard. I'm my own enemy. Sometimes I, I take it up on really hard on decisions throughout the day. Like if I feel like, oh, I, I didn't do so good in the morning or I didn't do my workout in the morning, then my whole entire rest of the day is sort of ruined. Um, I feel like in the past weeks, I've learned that it's okay if I don't do everything at the exact time at the same time every day. But if I pick up throughout the day, some good habits that will help and, and help me replicate that same behavior throughout the whole entire rest of the week, or perhaps throughout the whole entire rest of the month. Um, my mom always She's a hardworking woman, and, and one thing she taught me always was like, don't look at the, the 26 miles you got to run in a marathon. Take it one mile at a time. Earlier this year, I was able to accomplish my first full marathon, and I have asthma. I was never even able to accomplish a whole entire mile around a track in high school, and so I started training for that. And in my mind was just, if I can run the one mile, if I could just run the one mile, I know I'd be able to accomplish perhaps a 5K and then a 10K and then a 15K and then a half a marathon and then a whole marathon. And then I think it's if I, now that I've done that throughout my day, I think just start with one thing on your day that it's going to help you replicate that same behavior through your day, through your week, through your month. Powerful. I love that. Great share. Gloria, that was awesome. Uh, just start. Take it one day at a time, one step at a time, one mile at a time, and then also the restart button. Just because sometimes you feel like, and this is something that I feel like I also deal with, like beating yourself up. Oh, I should have done that. I should have woke up earlier. I should have got that workout in. I should have ate like that. I shouldn't have done that. If you take your past into your future, it can only damage you if it's not a positive look. So I love the reset button. This is a big thing in sports. They said no matter what happened last play, you start this play like nothing happened. Because if it was a win last play and you take that into the next play, it can cause cockiness. If it was a mess up last play and you take it into the next play, it can cause lack of confidence. Neither of those you want in your next play. So reset always, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, doesn't matter. You guys, Triple M with PC today. Mel Robbins brought it. Give me some energy for y'all that. Let's have a great Monday. Hey, happy Monday. 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 Monday.